Good morning, Sean and Milo. And in the studio with me is our MLA, Doug Klovchuk. Hello, sir. Hey, Sean. It's great to be here and uh, great to see Milo again, as always. And great to be in Revelstoke. Uh, always love coming to Revelstoke. Well, Doug, I wanted to have you in here because I wanted to talk a little bit about what's been going on in Victoria, as well as just a few concerns that I think might be relevant to small businesses here in Revelstoke, as well as the community of Revelstoke. So, Doug, where are we at with the highway? Because realistically, that's going to be an ongoing issue. But I know that you are in the house and you are trying to kick rocks around, so to speak. Yeah, no, we're kicking boulders uh, during estimates. Uh, and estimates are, of course, the period where we can sit down and, and talk to the minister about her budgets and where that is. And I had the, the opportunity uh, a few weeks ago to talk to the minister during those estimates and, and ask her the questions. They, they still use the words expedite and accelerate. Yet, uh, when it comes to the Kicking Horse Canyon, so nothing's really changed there. Uh, it's still on the books. The money's still there. Three Valley Gap, nothing's really changed there. I was told by the minister that uh, they've got some pilot project that they're going to be looking at this summer with some new kind of some metal netting that will be not influenced by any avalanche activity. So I don't really see a, a real plan yet. They are working towards it. But on the positive side of all of that, uh, I have arranged a meeting for April the 11th in Victoria with myself and Mayor Mark McKee and, and the minister. And we're going to sit down and talk about a bunch of things. I know that this winter has been very hard on Revelstokians. And we're certainly going to be talking about Highway 23 South. I've heard a lot of complaints about that as well, especially when the highway closes and people head down that way. It is a Class B highway. We've got to find some contingency plans to make that more of a, an accessible highway during closures. We are kicking the rocks, as you said, but uh, April 11th, I've got the meeting with Mark, myself, and, and the minister. We're going to talk about Revelstoke and this highway. All right, so they do have some plans for the summer, and that's going to cost a pile of money, too, but we don't know how much or what we're even looking at and when it'll be implemented. Not not at this point. They may, but I, uh, they haven't shared it with me. Where are we at with the speculation tax, and what are some of the concerns that you see that could affect small market businesses? Well, I think there's a couple things to say on the onset about the speculation taxes is that in this budget, taxes overall in British Columbia have increased $5.5 billion. So there's $5.5 billion more in taxes than there were previous to this budget. But the speculation tax has been put in uh, by the NDP to address the speculation in Vancouver, Victoria. What needs to be done? They're saying it all has to do with uh, affordable social housing. The speculation tax is not in Columbia River, Revelstoke, and that's what we have to tell people. But it might as well be. The uncertainty that it's created in this riding, what the speculation tax is, is that if you own a secondary home and you don't have anybody living in it full time, you will be subject to that speculation tax and it's 2% of the assessed value by 2019. So for some of these homes, it's going to be fairly expensive in terms of an additional tax on top of the taxes that they're already paying. If you're a British Columbian, living here in Revelstoke and happen to have a uh, home out in Quadra Island that you love to go and visit during the summertime and enjoy the ocean, you're going to end up having to pay that tax too. British Columbians are not immune to this, but then the government is saying that they will be giving you a tax rebate on your income tax so that that will offset that cost of that tax. Well, all indicators that I've seen so far say to me that the amount of money you get back on your taxes doesn't equal the amount of money that you're going to put out in this particular assessment tax. So it's draconian. It's certainly un-Canadian. Uh, I get it from a foreign buyer's perspective because there's investors coming in from Hong Kong and all over the world who are literally putting millions of dollars of capital into Vancouver and Victoria and then flipping those houses very quickly and making a lot of money. So we got to stop that. But that's not happening here. I did have an opportunity to meet directly with the Minister of Finance on this. And she said, well, Doug, I'll tell you, it's not coming to Columbia River Revelstoke. And I said, that's fantastic news. I need it in writing. Can you give it in writing? And I've sent two letters since that meeting to her asking uh, for that affirmation in writing. And unfortunately, I have not been given that. So that may speak volumes. It's in Kelowna right now and West Kelowna. This tax is driving business out of British Columbians. And I'm hearing from British Columbians who are saying, you know, in Radium, there, there's a 10 million project that's been put on hold, a hotel up at a ski resort put on hold, $500,000 project that's been put on hold in Golden. Projects that create good paying, family supporting jobs here in our riding that just went away, even though the tax isn't even here yet. They're scaring investors. Again, it's kind of like, let's go back to the 90s where they literally frightened investors out of British Columbia. It's happening here in Columbia River, Revelstoke. And frankly, Sean, I'm not going to sit by on my hands and watching my constituents lose work because of this non-speculation tax that's here, but it's not here. 
Is there a way to protect those that have properties that do live in BC also have properties elsewhere in BC? No, at this point, no. And I'll give you another example. I, I got a call from a fellow that uh, has lived in British Columbia for 20 years on Vancouver Island, he's, but he's had to move to the United States for his business. He intends to move back to BC. He's just going to get hammered. So people who've lived in British Columbia the majority of their lives, who've now moved away for work, are going to get hammered with this. So we're not only beaten up on Albertans and folks from Saskatchewan and folks from Washington in our riding, we're beaten up on British Columbians. It just doesn't make any sense at all. Now, the minister has said that there's some tweaking that likely be done on this particular tax, yet the premier has said that this task will remain as it is. So there's some real mixed messages here, and I'm not the only one who's fighting this. We're we're up in question period on this all the time. They've got to do something because this just, this was not well thought out and it's going to hurt British Columbians in the end of it. And it's not going to accomplish tasks that they sent out. It's not going to drive prices down so people can afford houses. We all have to find ways to discover better social housing. I agree with that, but this speculation tax is not the way to do it. Is there anything that's going on in the budget that you could see that has come out of the woodwork that you think, oh, this is a great positive effort moving forward? One of the things that I was excited to see in this budget is that there has been a significant amount of money uh, put out for First Nations language training, friendship centers, some other educational opportunities there. I think it's really important because language is the root of culture. And for many of our First Nations, if we're truly believing in reconciliation, and we should be, this is positive things. And I did congratulate them on that. I think there's around $55 million. It's a lot of money. That said, if you truly believe in reconciliation, then this is a step in the right direction. So I, I completely support that. So we'll find out from Doug Klobchok after April the 11th how the meeting goes with Claire Trevina and Mayor Mark McKee just to see where we're at with the project on Three Valley Gap, as well as what the overall long-term game Game plan is. We'll come from that meeting uh, with a bit more knowledge. As an opposition member in this government, or not in the government, but in, 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 the, in the House, uh, they expect me to, to raise holy hell. Um, but when they sit down with the mayor of Revelstoke, who lives this, sees the citizens every day who can't get to work because of traffic jams, the first responders can't get across the highway, there's deaths on either side of this, this city. When they sit down and talk to, to someone who lives that every day, it's pretty hard to ignore that. And that's why I really pushed hard for this meeting and really pleased that the mayor is most certainly going to be there. Excellent. Well, thanks, Doug, for filling us in on what's going on in Victoria about our writing. No, my pleasure. Always great to be here and looking forward to that dinner tonight.